Everybody, praise be to God and welcome to a brand new Let's Play, Freddy Fish and Woofers Maze Madness, the next humongous entertainment game and the next junior arcade style game that I'll be Let's Playing. I've been looking forward to this Let's Play for a long time. This is my favorite junior arcade game by far. This is just a, this is a magnificent game and Freddy's here for the Hi, tutorial. I'm Freddy Fish. Welcome to Maze Madness. Are you ready to play a game? Because I sure am. If you want to start the game at the very beginning, click right here. Or, if you want to continue playing an old game, this is the spot to click. A really great thing is, you can even make and play your own customized levels. So, if you want to build new levels, just click right here and you can start building. And if you want to change your levels, click here. When you want to play your customized levels, all you gotta do is click here, and you're on your way! And most of all, have a great time collecting those kelp seeds! Thank you, Freddy. So, yeah, let's start a new game. This game is amazing. This is like the perfect length. It's not like 120 levels of Bulunorama, or even 100 levels, like Dog on a Stick. It's 50 levels. But they're all reasonably length levels, so they're short at the beginning and then they get longer, so I'll type in my name. I'm Artie. So, much like Dog on a Stick and Bonorama, there are these junior helpers. We can get unlimited tries, so unlimited lives, as well as bubbles on. What this essentially does, well, actually we'll get into what that does later on in the game. So, let's just get started, shall we? Level 1! Jumpin' Jellyfish, let's get all those kelp seeds! So this is how Maze Madness plays. This is like a top-down maze style game, kind of like Pac-Man. So we play as Freddy Fish, and we are in this maze, and the goal is essentially to collect all of these green kelp seeds here. Each kelp seed will give us one point, and we need to collect them all on the level in order to beat the level and then proceed to the next one. Now there are two different ways of moving Freddy around. You can click with the mouse, and it'll basically make a homing point, and Freddy will home in on there and actually travel there on her, on her own, which is kind of cool. But a better way to go about this is to just use the keyboard. You can use the keyboard to move up, down, left, and right. And that just controls Freddy a lot better and a lot easier. So that's what I will be doing for this Let's Play. Also, if you are from the Lemmings forums and you've seen my underwater tile set, these this game will look very familiar. But every single piece, like tile set, all the tile sets I've made for the underwater one for Lemmings came out of this game. Except for the sand, which was from Cave Story. So anyways, let's swim around and collect the kelp seeds. There are also these seashells down here. These are not required, but rather these give us extra points. So that gave us 50 points right there. That gave us 10, and that gave us 5. So man, those conch shells are worth a ton. So it's very, very simple gameplay. But it's really fun. And it starts out slow, but the levels quickly pick up. So that was level 1. That's just the introductory level. And they quickly pick up and introduce new stuff. Wow, Grandma Grouper's kelp seeds are everywhere! So this level introduces us to two new things. So you can see the firecracker up there, and then the cotton candy down there. Those are special, like, point... Like, these give us points, kind of like the seashells. But what's interesting is that these don't always appear. They have, like, I believe a 50% chance of appearing on a given level. So there was like an ice cream cone that could have appeared on the last level that didn't, just because of the random chance factor. So this is the cotton candy, we get that, we get 60 points. And then we can get the firecracker up here, and that'll be worth 70 points. 
So if these appear, that's just a nice little bonus you can get. And then this over here is a worm doodle. This is the first of the main power-ups in the game. If we grab this worm doodle, we can now swim like twice as fast, at least. That's my favorite power-up. It's really nice. So we can just kind of swim our way through the maze, collect these uh, kelp seeds, and then, as you can see, we've got the high score down there. And then these sandwiches, those are our peanut butter and jellyfish sandwiches. These are essentially the lives that we have in the game. So if we run out of those, we're going to be in trouble, but we won't run out of those. At least, I hope not. We better get swimming and collect all those kelp seeds! So this introduces two new things. The first of these is the purple sea urchin gate right here. So we cannot pass through this gate unless we pick up the purple sea urchin. Then we can open the gate and go through. So those are kind of like the keys of the uh, game. Then this over here, this is a bag of pearls. This will contain three pearls. Each pearl is worth almost 100 points. You want to pick those up. I believe they're worth 150 points apiece. So that's a nice way of getting points. And points don't really do anything in the long run, but because this is an arcade-style game, you can, it's like a side thing. Hey, try to get as many points as you can, but it doesn't play a role in the actual level. So we're already on level 4, and there are only 50 levels. But of course, the levels are going to get longer. You better get swimming and collect all those kelp seeds. Thus far, all of the levels we've seen have been the same size. So that's an ice cream. It's worth 50 points, and again, randomly appears. This over there, you can see that statue of a fish over there is, for one, pushing us so that it's harder to swim in that direction, but also spitting water out. We cannot pass through that way. If we try going down here, we can't. If the water pushes us too far away. So we can swim this way, grab ourselves a cotton candy and the conch shell. We also have, I believe, a lion's paw, and I'm not sure what that shell is like. I think it's a spiral shell. That is our first enemy of the game. These are tiny little worms. They they move around, but they're not harmful. If you eat them, you get extra points. Noticing a trend. So yeah, you see, he pushed me away with the water, but also just swimming this way. We can. This is a current here. So swimming to the right is harder, but then swimming to the left is a lot faster in the current. So that'll, that'll come into play later on in the game. So now we can open this. Eat that worm. And then this is a present. This is the highest valued um, randomly generating point uh, power up. Grab it, it's 100 points. And again, only about a 50% chance that that'll actually appear on the level. We can grab the last kelp scene, and we're already on level 5. And I'm probably going to take this Let's Play 5 levels at a time, because there are 5 levels in a given world. And I didn't mention this. This world we're in is, are the Deep Look Dark Caves. That's not the official name, but I've always referred to this world as the Deep Dark Caves. And this introduces us to our first a real enemy. The, so the worms on the last level technically count as enemies, just because they move around on their own. But they weren't actually harmful to us. This guy is. This is the anglerfish. He can only swim left and right, which is nice. And he basically just swims until he hits a wall and then turns around. However, he will also turn around before he hits the wall if we happen to get in his way. So for example, we can go down here, collect these shells, and if we pop up right behind him, he's going to turn around and try to eat us. If he eats us, he won't actually eat Freddy, he'll eat one of our sandwiches. Which again, it's like our lives for the game. Also, this level introduces bonus rooms. Every five levels, which is the last, so the last level in each world has a bonus room. And you can tell where the bonus room is. You can see this wall I'm right next to, to my right, is cracked slightly. That's a good indication that the bonus room is there. You might be wondering how we open it. Well, the way we open it is we need a magic scepter, essentially. And on a level with a bon on any level that has a bonus room, basically there will be an invisible square. Yep, that's the one. We just swam on that square. There's no real telling. It's just an invisible square. And that'll make this magic scepter spawn. And I believe when you spawn the magic scepter, Depending on the bonus level, it will either stay around for 60, 40, uh, 45, or 30 seconds. So we only have a limited amount of time to actually reach the Magic Scepter. So we're basically going to have to wait for the Anglerfish to pass. We can go over here. And actually... Yeah. Grab it. And then the crack opens up. If we swim inside the crack, we enter the bonus room. 
So the bonus room is like this, and then we've got a bunch of these little weird guys spawning. If we touch them, they give us points. Each different type of guy will stay around for a different amount of time. And every time we grab that specific guy, it's worth less next time. So we grab the new duck, so he's still worth 100, but if we grab that first duck up there again, he'd only be worth 75, then they'd go back down to 50, and then I believe down to 25. So yeah, if we hit the duck over here, he's worth only 50. Then if we hit him again, only 25. They can't fall below 25 points. So it's really just swim around, hit these guys, and rack up a bunch of points. One advantage of getting points, aside from just the bragging rights, oh, look at all the points I got, is that every time you reach a certain milestone of points, you get an extra peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. So that's just nice. Getting extra lives are always nice, and the levels do get pretty tough later on in the game. Not as tough as Balloonorama, but arguably tougher than Dog on a Stick. Because Dog on a Stick, you literally just had to get to the end, but here we actually have to get everything. Uh, all the kelp seeds. I need to stop going out of my way to get the duck. The ducks are just so fun. I love ducks. Yeah, we got 2,500 points, so now we've got an extra peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. So the anglerfish, once you know how he works, he's he, you don't have to worry about him too much. So we can open this gate here and grab ourselves a worm doodle. That speed boost is really nice. And on that note, we've reached the end of the deep, dark caves, which is pretty nice. So now we're on level 6, that'll take us to the second world, and that's where we're going to end the episode off for today. So, very interesting game, very fun, and it's going to really pick up in the next world. We're going to get introduced to a lot of new stuff. Mainly, the levels are going to get longer, so that'll be exciting. Okay, on your mark, get set, and get ready to play! You can go ahead and pick a level to start on. Click on this down button if you want to go to a lower level. If you want to head to a higher level, then click on the up button. But you got to remember that you can only go up to the highest level you've played. Rules are rules. When you're ready for some amazing action, press go and we're off on the hunt for Grandma's Health Seeds. Or if you want to leave the screen, click on the stop button and you're going faster than you can say Codfish Commando. Best of luck to you, Captain. Thanks, Loofer. Yep, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you continue to join me in this awesome series. We're going to be showing off... Well, at least I want to show off everything in the game. Everything. And that'll be awesome. So, tune in next time. I really hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.